Gyro Control for emulation on Android is here. I would know since I've been working with my homie G for the past three months to make it a reality. Here's how it works in precisely this long. Download the Gyro Buddy app, go through the permissions, set a keybind, go over to your emulator, enable just the right stick, uncheck relative stick center, drag the anchor over the stick, and bam, you've got gyro control. Gyro control. You've got it. It's not always perfect. It works a little differently from emulator to emulator and from game to game, but give it a shot. In WinLater, for example, since the virtual gamepad mapping disables the physical gamepad, one workaround is to set the stick output as mouse direction. That way, there's no competing gamepads. Motion control is an intimate thing, and we've got to get it feeling just right, or as close to it as possible. Head on back over to the main page and hit Setup Helper. This window's got it all. Tab 1 is for dialing in the precise position of your anchor one pixel at a time. Tab 2 has settings including inverting your X and Y axis, disabling your X and Y axis, bind one hold slash toggle changes your first key bind to be a toggle rather than a hold to activate gyro if you want it to just stay on. And then lock and hide will set the opacity to zero uh, and allow touch pass through for the anchor once you have everything all set up. Tab three has your standard settings such as sensitivity, smoothing, dead zone size, and X amount and Y amount. It also has two experimental features, screen input and high frequency. A short aside on how GyroBuddy works. GyroBuddy uses the accessibility service, essentially the Stephen Hawking mode, to simulate touch where there isn't any. It decides where to touch based upon the position of the anchor and the gyroscopic input. It translates gyroscope to touch originating from the anchor. That being said, it's not a continuous gesture, like a line or a squiggle. It is a series of taps. And so that's why the virtual analog stick is required for input, as it doesn't require a continuous gesture and works just fine with a 60 hertz tap. Now, in some cases, the tapping may be registered as a continuous gesture. So we have this experimental feature, screen input, so you can give it a try. Also, high frequency turns the tap to 120 hertz from 60 hertz. This is experimental. On the fourth tab, you have your three keybind inputs and a very key setting called radius. Now, the virtual analog stick on some emulators does not activate until it's past a certain threshold. It's kind of like a dead zone. What radius does is it expands out the zero zero position, as you can see here. So subtle gyro movements translate to subtle camera movements and don't feel like they're being lost in the dead zone. You can customize the sensitivity of your second and third keybinds to be a percentage of the first keybind. So you can have sensitive for looking around and then when when you're dialed in, looking down your iron sights, you can have it less sensitive, more for fine-tuned aiming. Below we have response curves. These are handy, self-explanatory. I think slow is a good option. That's where I've been hanging out. Now, if you've dialed this all in and found it works well for you in an emulator, you might wonder, how do I save this preset so that I can go and dial it in for another emulator? Well, if you've gotten that far and it works well enough, well, then it's time to pay. A one-time $2.99 US purchase includes the ability to save up to eight presets, as well as exporting and importing your current settings. Very handy. Now, another brief aside about how the accessibility service works. There's an ancient proverb that goes like this. Touch comes in two streams, accessibility and screen and those two streams may never mix. What I'm trying to say here is that while the gyro is active, your touchscreen is occupied by the accessibility service, and you can't also use your screen to touch. That being said, while the gyro is off or within the dead zone, so not touching you know, below a certain threshold of velocity, 
you can touch. And so some people are brave enough to want to make this work and that's why we have the floating button. With this, you can activate and deactivate gyro straight from your screen. User discretion is advised. You can rename your presets over here. And if you look at see more, you can see the export and import settings buttons. Another handy thing about the setup helper is that it can be minimized and you can take it with you while you're dialing in your settings. A special thank you to the alpha testers who without their crashes and feedback, this app would not be what it is today. Second special thank you to my wife and child who have been very patient while I spend all my free time coding with ChatGPT. There were lots of features that I wanted to implement that were not possible, such as having a listener for stick input to cancel gyro because currently the gyroscope input and the stick input don't mix and it's a little janky. So you have to let go of your gyro bind before you start using your right stick, unless it's in the dead zone or unless it's off. You'll see when you try it out. I'd like you to know that I tried everything I could to make the experience as smooth as possible and it can work quite well, but ultimately this is a workaround. Going into this, I had zero experience programming and if you want to do something like this too, as long as you're as stubborn as I am, you can do it. Isn't that right, G? In 500 meters, turn left. No, seriously, it's much more uncanny than that. I know exactly how you like your coffee and I'm already brewing it for you. Well, check it out, and soon we'll all be gyroing where people have never gyroed before. Peace.